Deb, you gonna get that? Hi, Cliff. Still brown bagging it, I see. The reason. Nice chatting with you, JR, but I'm busy. I'm busy running you in oil. I'm sure you know the way out. I've shown it to you before. Well, Cliff, I didn't come here to cause you any trouble. I want you to know that. Yeah, that'll be the day. Just hit the road, because whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. Well, I was kind of hoping you'd do the selling. I don't, I don't know, maybe I do believe it, because, you know, you're just beating the same old drum. You and oil belong to my daddy, and I close the door when you leave. Cliff, I've mellowed over the years. You're looking at a, a kindlier, gentler J.R. Ewing. And i tell you the truth, I didn't think there was a chance in hell of you selling the company back to me. But I thought I'd give you the chance so that when you lose it, you'll know you've been fair warned. Believe me, it'll never happen. And I'm even going to tell you why. Because Carter McKay and I... Been talking merger. Yeah, I know all about that. You couldn't know. Nobody knows. Somebody always knows. And somebody always talks. And you ought to know by now that I hear everything. Once I recommend the acquisition to my board, you're out of the oil business for good. You in oil ceases to exist. Can't be soon enough. Then maybe, finally, I can get on with my life. What life? I thought you lived to be J.R. and owning Ewing Oil was a sign that you'd done it once and for all. That's right. But now there are more important things in my life. You know, I got a daughter out there somewhere that I don't even know. And I was so busy with J.R. and the oil business that I let her get away from me. And now I want to find her. I want to find her mother. And I just hope it's not too late to repair the damage. I got a private detective trying to find me. Cliff, we will make the deal. I promise you. You in on this, Bobby? Well, hello, Cliff. Nice to see you, too. Never mind. Are you in on this, Rich A.R.? Am I going to be fighting the Ewing brothers all over again? Would you tell me what in the world you are talking about and what it has to do with J.R.? Well, you mean to tell me that you don't know that J.R. came waltzing into my office this morning? My office, not his, trying to get me to sell Ewing oil back to him? Cliff, J.R. is in Europe. He's been there for the last five years. Wherever he was, he is here now. Don't tell me you don't know he's here. I didn't know. Oh, that's great. He doesn't even come to see his own brother before he comes to try to get me first. And if you're not going back into oil, what are you doing with her? Her? I think he means me. Hello, Mr. Barnes. Yeah, her. Yeah, her name, Julia something. She's with Pedrick Oil. Yeah, we made him a proposal about two months ago. Yeah, I remember it fondly. We turned down your proposal. Yeah, why do I feel I'm on a completely different planet? Why are you with her? Well, not that it's any of your business, Cliff, but Julia, who seems to know everybody, and I are old friends. Now, it's been lovely talking to you, but I have plans for this evening. And we're actually late. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, fine, fine, fine. I'll tell you what, you see that snake brother of yours, you tell him that I'm going to kick his butt if he tries to screw around with me. Now, I'll give him your regards, Cliff. You have a very nice evening. Goodbye, Mr. Barnes. An odd little man. He is that. Right this way, Miss McKay. Tell me, it's still hard to get a good steak in Europe. That's one of the things I miss the most, Mac. Big old slab of Texas beef. Sit down. <laughs> I'm touched that you remember that I eat here on Thursday. I'll give you credit for not trying to pretend that this is an accidental meeting. Yeah, I thought we ought to talk about West Star. You ain't off. Sooner the better. Here you are, Mr. Kay. I'm curious. Why? Lord knows, Cliff Barnes is no threat to you. It's a good company. Still has some undeveloped fields, and we have the money to develop them. Well, assuming this acquisition does go through, does that mean that Ewing Oil will cease to exist? Like Jonah and the whale, we would swallow it whole. You're still trying to pick off the independents one by one, are you? 
Something along those lines. Let me throw you a hypothetical question, Mac. Say you did buy Ewing Oil, and then you turned around and sold it for a substantial profit. That'd be quite a big feather in your cap, wouldn't it? <laughs> you don't have the money to pull it off, J.R. How would you know that? The same way that you knew that Cliff and I were discussing merger. Information flows both ways. Well, say I won the lottery or some such. This could still be an attractive deal for you. No way, no how. Ewing Oil is simply a small part of a long-range program I promised my board. And you could always promise them a big profit now and Ewing Oil later. Not to mention what this deal could put in your pocket. I don't think so. Never say never, Mac. The one thing I always liked about you is you never let promises stand in the way of profit. Here's the problem. And you ain't going Hi, good morning. Morning, JR. This is Steve Grisham, the detective I hired. Huh, Mr. Ewing. How are you doing? You got anything going? Yes, sir, I think we're there. Well, good. <laughs> All right, come on in. Want coffee? I don't think. Bye. Bring in a cup, would you? Yes, sir. You didn't have any trouble finding her? No, sir. Only took a couple of days. And I don't think she's trying to hide from anybody. Yeah, I hope the poor darling doesn't expect that idiot Barnes to try to come after her. Where is she, anyhow? Right under your nose. Last week, she was in New Orleans. She opens up at a club in Waco tonight. Is that a fact? Uh, what about her daughter? What's her name, Pamela? Pamela Rebecca. She's not with her. I'm getting Mrs. Cooper's telephone records from New Orleans. Chances are we'll get the daughter through them. Here's your coffee, Jr. Well, just set it down over there, honey. Oh, well, listen, Sly, find out if Judge Hooker is still sitting on a bench up in Waco. And if he is, get him on the phone for me. Yes, sir. Hey, you've done a hell of a job. There's going to be a bonus in it for you. Well, thank you, sir. It's been a real pleasure. I'll get back to you on the daughter's whereabouts. You do that. Yeah, the sooner the better. Yeah. Judge Hooker's online, too. He seems delighted to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, I guess he is. Oh, listen, I'm going to go up to Waco. Charter me a plane, would you? Yes, sir. Uh, hello, Your Honor. Yeah, I know it's been some time. Listen, I've got some very interesting information for you. Alton Cooper? Yes. You're under arrest for the possession of an illegal substance. What Please come with us. What are you talking about? Man. You have the right to remain no, silent. Anything mistake. you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Judge, I really appreciate this. I can't thank you enough. No, thank you for letting me know about this, Jr. You know, it's just terrible what these music people think they can get away oh, with. Oh, I know it. I know it. You have the commitment papers? I got them right here. All it requires is the signature of a family member. Well, you know, as luck would have it, um, her brother Mitch is married to my little niece, Lucy, and he gave me the power of attorney. Well, is that a fact? Uh-huh. So I don't suppose it'd be necessary for a, a hearing or a trial or anything like that. She could go straight into the sanitarium. Well, as long as I had that signature. <laughs> yeah, of course. Please, ladies and gentlemen, don't rush off. The real meeting's about to begin. Oh, hello, JR. You know, somehow I thought you'd be here earlier. No, Cliff Barnes, I see. Thank you again, everyone. I'd like to talk to Mr. Ewing alone, if you don't mind. Uh, Mac, I'd really like him to stay. I think they ought to hear this. If that's what you really want. By all means, ladies and gentlemen, stay. As Westar board members, I think this would be interesting for you. Read them and weep. I'm sure I already know what they say. You are now the largest minority stockholder in Westar. But you still can't get Ewing Oil, no matter how many shares you have. But why is that? Because we don't own it. Barnes sold it to someone else. To who? To me. Bobby? Cliff sold it to me this morning, before he left for Waco to find Afton. You surprised? Mm, not really. Sometimes everything works out just the way you want it to. Are you saying this is all part of some plan of yours? <laughs> Welcome back to the oil business, Bobby. Lord knows, it wasn't easy. West our board members, you have a problem. 
And that problem is sitting right there. Because of him, not only does Ewing Oil still exist, but there is a Ewing running it. And there is also a Ewing with enough West Star stock and proxies to make your lives an absolute hell. Unless, of course, you'll agree with me that I would be the ideal choice as the next chairman of the board of Westar. That's never going to happen, J.R., never. Don't kid yourself, Mac. Your long-range program just fell on its ass. I like your board members. Right now, they are trying to figure out what it's going to cost to retire you. <laughs> you son of a... Hey, don't take it personally. I mean, after all, some days you're the windshield, and some days you're the bug. 